Scotty Borden with wholehogsports.com in Arkansas. Um, Jalen, how do you hope, I know this it, loss is still fresh, but how, how do you hope this team is remembered and what mark do you think you and this team made in, in terms of kind of revitalizing the program and, and putting it back on a national stage? Uh, this team will never be forgotten, man. And this group has done a lot for this program and the culture of this program. I think in year two with this coaching staff, man, it just puts you on a jump start in the right direction, man. It puts those expectations in a bit of a standard. You know, it sets the standard for every single year. The work that we put in and the work that the players coming in will have to put in and just, you know, the expectations of the returners every year, you know, you'll want to get back to this point and get back to these experiences. So to be able to, to do what we did, especially in a year like COVID where you're faced with a lot of challenges and just a different way of life. Honestly, us being in a bubble included, honestly, you can't say enough about this team. Obviously, we want, want the outcome of the night to go different, but I think this team will just, when we get back and give it some time to heal a little bit, you know, you'll remember everything we did. Next question is from Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Jalen, you guys have been a comeback team all year, especially in this tournament. Um, and, and you look like you might do it again when you cut that 18 def point deficit to four. What do you think? Was Baylor just too good to get all the way over the hump against them? or what? And they, they sort of pulled away late there. What, what do you think happened there? Uh, that's a really good team across the way, man. And just, you know, we've been doing that all year. I'm not sure why it happens, but it's really hard to come back, especially from down 18. I didn't even know we were down that much at one point in the game, but it just shows the resiliency of this group. You know, we almost did it. We weren't able to tonight. We did a lot. Of, we did a lot on our 12 game win streak, and especially these three pass games in the tournament. We just had a great fight and we were able to dig in and get back. Our next question is from Curtis Wilkerson. Hey, Jalen, you, you kind of mentioned just laying the foundation with this group. Can, can you just talk about doing that with the three freshmen, playing as much as they did, and then being able to, to serve as a mentor for them? Um, our freshmen are great, man. They made this experience everything it was for me, honestly. Every single one of the guys, but the freshmen especially, because they come to me for advice on the court, off the court. They listen tremendously, man, and they just – it's just – Amazing to see them flourish the way they did. Guys like Devo Davis and Jalen Williams, who had no playing time early in the year and may have started to get down for themselves. But me, myself, and Justin Smith, we we're just letting them know like, your time's going to come, honestly. It's a long season, especially the things that we're able to accomplish during conference. And, you know, you look down the stretch now, and without those guys, we're nowhere near where we are now. So, just to watch them, Moses Moody included, man, once in a lifetime player to play with, honestly, and just really a, a, a tremendous talent. I'm excited to see what all three of them can do after this. Our next question is from Andrew Hutchinson. Jalen, kind of along those lines, I was wondering about Devo. Where, what, where did you see him grow the most on the court and where do you think he could take his game next year? <laughs> to the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Devo Davis, man, is a tremendous, just energizer bunny. He does, there's not a thing he can't do on the court, honestly. I'd love to see him, you know, really take on that leadership role going forward, you know, because he can do it. I think, you know, maybe some catch and shoot opportunities, but I think we all see the work he puts in. And although it doesn't show up on a stat sheet every time as far as his percentages, I know he's capable of doing almost anything on the basketball court. So, I can't put my finger on one thing that Devo can't do, honestly. And I think he can go as far as his game is going to take him. Our next question is from Carter Hill, fifth quarter. Yeah, Jalen, Carter Hill with fifth quarter. Congratulations on a great season. I'm just curious, how much has Coach meant to you in your time here at Arkansas? Coach meant everything, honestly. Like, I took a blind leap of faith, honestly, not taking any visits. And really just, he stood by me. Didn't make any empty promises. He pushed me even when I didn't want to be pushed. Coach is really like, you just see how emotional he is about the game every single day. And, you know, sometimes in the season it gets annoying or, you know, you might get a little backlash. But looking back, like, I'll never have anybody like him, honestly. And I've never had anybody like him. He's a once-in-a-lifetime coach, really, and just 
his passion for the game, his passion for success really matched mine. And I think that's why we were able to do what we did this year. Our next question is from Tom Murphy. Jalen, what was the importance of uh, Mitchell's presence in, for them in the second half and, and how difficult was it to, to contain? What was it like trying to cover him? Uh, that <laughs> Davion Mitchell is one of the fastest guys I've ever guarded, especially this year. But he's definitely a tough cover. You could tell they're a completely different team with him out there on both sides of the ball. He's a facilitator for them as well as just really their anchor defensively. So he causes a lot of problems on both sides of the ball. He's an excellent dribble driver. He can also knock down shots, and he's as good as anybody we played this year. Our next question is from Scotty Bordelon. Hey, Jalen, when uh, Baylor jumped out 13-2, you know, is there anything you can put your finger on on, on you guys' end that, that led to that? Uh, not exactly. I think they came out hot. They're a confident group. They're an older group. So – with games like that, especially against a younger group like us, and you know, the terms of the fact that we just start three freshmen, I think they may have honestly, I can't put my finger on it. No, I wouldn't say there's any one thing I was that would jump out. You know, we're a team that usually gets down in the first half, and tonight wasn't any different. Our next question is from Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You know, Jalen, we know Moses is probably moving on to the NBA. You and Justin, I'm sure I have a shot to play pro ball. Um, you know, um, but, but, you know, Devo's back, uh, Jalen, the other Jalen's back, you know, Note's back. Um, what do you think about the future for this team? You know, Eric, add, he's added some good recruits already. I'm sure they'll add some, some more good ones. Uh, the core of this team that will return will have this experience to fall back on and to push them forward. And the work ethic that they saw them have, I think they'll continue to increase that. And I believe that, you know, with this coaching staff and with the support of the community and the fans, they'll definitely do everything they can to get back to this. They're high character guys and super competitors, man. So I believe they'll push one another and the people that are brought in to have the same success. Our next question is from Andrew Hutchinson. Jalen, similar to what I asked about Devo earlier, uh, how how did you see Jalen Williams improve throughout the year and, and where? Uh, he came into his own on both sides of the ball, really. Just an excellent screen setter to come in, and you can always tell he had the loudest voice, but sometimes Jay Will would say things just to say them. By the end of the year, he was making calls that were like, okay, detrimental to us getting wins or detrimental to us getting stops. He became a tenacious rebounder, just excellent. One of the best in the country, honestly, that I had seen. And he became an anchor on, honestly, both sides of the ball. He was making calls on both sides and telling me what we should run and giving me suggestions. And even with our coverage, is helping out a lot. So I think he just came into his own as far as the maturity level and, you know, his, his understanding of the game overall. Our final question is from Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Yeah, Jalen, I think they never mute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, you know, JD was obviously in a scoring groove tonight, but he just didn't get to play enough minutes. How, how tough was that? He scores 14 and 15. You know, if he could have played 32 or whatever, like he usually does when he's hot, you know, who knows what might have happened. Uh, honestly, I think some causes didn't go his way. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes it's how it goes. I think the game, I'm not going to say we would have definitely won the game, but I think we would have had a better shot at the end of the game with him out there on the court, man. He's an excellent combo guard, score, facilitator, and, you know, it's unfortunate that this had to be his last game of the year and he couldn't, you know, the refs kind of took it out of his hands a little bit with some of the 50-50 calls that didn't bounce his way. and. You know, I think JD had continued to do great things, both, you know, in basketball and in life, honestly, but life after uh, Arkansas. So I think, you know, it was a pleasure to play with him this year, and I can't say, wait to see what he's able to do after this. Hey, thanks, Jay. I really enjoyed covering you this year. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.